Hi guys, uh, today we're covering independent and dependent variables and this is uh, something that doesn't lend a lot of math mathematical calculations to it, although we're going to get into some a little later, but this is more uh, about uh, labeling the correct axes and de uh, deciding, you know, which is going to be my x variable and which is going to be my, my y value variable. Uh, if on your note packet you see I've defined what an independent variable is and a dependent variable is, and what we're asking you to do is, it, in this first example, is, well, what if I have this independent variable being the age of a student? Okay, what could be some possible dependent variables? Meaning, what what type of of uh, terms or what type of things would depend on the age of a student? It all has to go back to what that independent variable is. All right. So, say you have different ages of students. What would that cause? as a possible dependent variable. And this is kind of different for people because usually we're, we're used to in mathematics there being a, a definite way to do something or a definite algorithm, all right, a process to do something, and you get a definite answer. Well, this is very different because it's open-ended, all right? If I tell you you have a bunch of ages of students, okay, we could even, you know, we could say that's going to be our, our x variable, right? And we could even put some numbers in. Say we had a student that was 3, and a student that was 5, and a student that was 7, and a student that was 8, and a student that was 13, and a student that was 15. That age is very independent of itself, all right? Uh, or I should say itself, than, than anything else, all right? Um, but what is going to depend on the age? Well, one thing... Uh, that would depend on the age, maybe would be their their grade in school. All right. Uh, usually, if you are five, that drives or that that um, says what grade you're going to be in school. All right. Um, so that would be one example. All right. We could go to this next one, the height of a golfer, and we want to relate it to something with golf. Uh, usually. If the taller you are, you can probably hit the ball farther. All right, that may be a dependent variable. So, so let's say uh, distance. Distance. I can't spell distance. All right, distance uh, for a drive. Okay, usually they call it a drive in golf. All right, and there may be some relationship there. Okay, and usually. Uh, the the height of the golfer as they get taller they can usually hit the ball farther is that always the case no but it may be dependent the distance may be dependent on how tall you are all right uh, let's look at this next one the amount of pain reliever taken all right so we're talking about taking some Tylenol or bear or what or what have you for a headache something like that all right and usually uh, the the more you take um, that could drive the 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 better the better you feel. All right. Um, so if you you know if you're an adult and you're supposed to take two aspirin, and you only take a half of one, well, you're that's probably not going to um, solve your headache. All right. So the amount of, of pain reliever that you take um, could affect the uh, pain relief that you have. All right, so that could be a dependent. That would be dependent on whether you take any or how much you take. Uh, the number of years of education. Now, this one this one is pretty uh, straightforward as far as what I'm going to put over here. And this is really proven. The number of years of education, the more education someone has, it usually means uh, it's going to affect their, um, their earnings. OK? And their, your earnings usually go back to how much education you have, whether you have, uh, say, a high school degree uh, or a GED or a high school degree, and then up to a, a two-year degree or a college degree or beyond that, or a master's or a doctorate degree. All right, that, uh, This number of years of education 
is by itself totally independent, but your earnings will depend on that. All right. Uh, the amount of fertilizer used in the garden, of course, we, we could say something like maybe the amount of weeds. Oh, fertilizer. I, I don't want to say the amount of weeds. The amount of, of growth, I should say, for your, your plants. Okay. Uh, usually the amount of growth is going to depend on the amount of fertilizer you use. The more fertilizer, the more growth you're going to get. Okay. So that could be a, a possibility. And again, these don't have to be the only answers that could go here. What we're looking for is what would depend on this independent variable. Uh, the size of a diamond ring. Hmm. Well, I could maybe say the price of the ring. Okay, the price of the ring would depend on how big of a diamond you get. All right, and the total salary for all of the team's players. Uh, let's see. What would affect as your, your salary of all the team players goes up or goes down? Uh, a lot of times that, that depends on your winning, or, or I shouldn't say depends on, that drives your winning percentage. Not always, but your winning percentage, a lot of times nowadays in sports, it's too bad, really. Nowadays, it depends on how much your, your team spends as a whole for their players, okay? So in each one of these cases, this variable over here usually depends on or is driven by this independent variable over here, all right? Okay, here's example two. Now, this one, we're going to uh, flip it around the other way. We're going to say, here is a list of dependent variables. We want you to give a list of independent variables. So, in other words, what variable over here would drive this variable over here? Okay, so let's kind of switch it around here. The height of a sun. Well, what would the height of a sun depend on? Well, the one thing I would I would think of is his age. All right. So you could say the age of a son would probably drive how tall he is. All right. So this would be independent. This would be totally independent on its own compared to the height. All right. Let's try the next one. Uh, number of points scored in a game. Well, that would, uh, I would say, independently, how about the number of minutes that this person played, all right? That would definitely drive the number of points because if they don't play any minutes, they're not going to score any points. The more minutes they play, the more apt they are to score more points, all right? Uh, how about the number of hamburgers to make for a family pic picnic? Well, uh, I would say probably the number of people that are there, number of people attending. All right, um, that would definitely drive. So again, I'm looking for what would drive the dependent variable? What would affect the dependent variable? All right, uh, the time it takes for a person to run a mile uh, it could be a, a few different things. I'm going to go with the age of the person. Again, these are the same as, as before. This is definitely not the only answer you could put there, but the age of the person definitely would drive how long it takes for them to run a mile, all right? Uh, the amount of money won by a contestant, I'm going to say, well, probably how many questions they get right. Number of questions answered correctly. I'm going to squeeze this in right down here, all right? Uh, the, more answer, the more they answer correctly, probably the more money they're going to earn. All right, so that's definitely going to be to be an independent variable of how much money you make. Uh, the fuel efficiency of a car. We had this in, a, in an example a few few days ago. Um, we talked about the weight of a car. Okay, that would definitely drive its fuel efficiency. All right. Uh, how about this next one? Number of honeybees in the hive. Uh, if you think about honeybees, uh, I'm going to go with the time of day is usually at nighttime there are more in the hive. During the daytime they're all out uh, pollinating and, and gathering uh, uh, stuff that they need. Um, so I'm going to say the time of day is going to drive how many uh, honeybees are in the, in the beehive, okay? Uh, how about this one? Number of blooms on a, on a plant. Uh, let's see. I would think, I would think that would be the, the age
age of the plant. All right, we're going to say the age of the plant is going to drive how many bl how many uh, blooms you would have on the plant. And how about this last one, number of forest fires in a state during a particular year. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Number of forest fires uh, in a state. Uh, how about the temperature? Okay, how about the average average temperature throughout the year? Okay. Obviously, if we have big, we have we have more um, higher temperatures, then we're probably going to get more more fires. All right, in the forest. It's not not necessarily it doesn't have to be, but these all here that we we wrote in, they are totally independent. They can stand by themselves. They do not depend on the ones over here. Okay. So you start to get the the difference between independent and dependent. All right. Now let's take this this uh, this idea and actually apply it to uh, more of a mathematical problem here. All right, guys, here's example three. Now, we're actually going to take this independent, dependent variable idea and try to apply it to a problem. And this is very similar to a problem we've seen before. It says a cell phone company offers the following basic cell phone plan to its customers. A customer pays a monthly fee of $40, so they have to pay the $40, and they also pay $0.15 cents per text. All right, there's no limit on the number of text messages, and there is no charge for receiving text messages. All right, so let's work through this. What, what would be the cost for the plan for sending the following messages? All right, well, zero text, that would be $40. You have to pay that $40 no matter what. All right, what if we sent 25 texts? Well, you have to pay that $40 plus, okay, plus, you're sending 15 cents, or I'm sorry, you're paying 15 cents for every text, and you're going to pay for 25 texts. All right, so let's bring up the old calculator here, and let's go get it on the screen here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, we're going to go uh, 15 cents, and we're going to multiply it by 25. That gives me 375, and I'm going to add in that $40. So obviously I'm paying 43 75. All right. There we go. And what about this next one? Uh, what if we have 250 texts? Okay, and that's going to be very similar here. I need to take uh, 250, multiply it by 15 cents. Oops, 15 cents. 37.50, and then add in the $40. And that's 77.50. Okay, so I'd have $40 plus 15 cents for 250 50 texts, so that's 77.50. All right, so basically what we did is we have done a, a, a similar thing as to when we were working with uh, y equals mx plus b, all right, linear, linear functions. But we want to take it a little step further before we put it on a, on a graph. We want to say, what is the independent variable? What, what of these, these two... Uh, items that we're talking about, meaning the number of texts and the amount of, of charge we're going to be charged, um, what is the independent? What is totally independent of the other? All right. So really, what drives the other? Well, it looks like the number of texts drives, tells you, the total cost. All right, because if I do more tax, then that drives my cost up. If I do less tax, that drives my cost down. All right, so one follows from the other. So I'm going to say my independent variable. I'm going to put this over here in the in the uh, chart here, is the number of tax, and I'm going to say that is my x variable. So I can list those zero, twenty-five and 250 right here. And I'm going to put my total cost over here, and I'm going to say that is going to be my, my y, my y variable. And that is going to be, what, $40, $43.75, and $77.50. OK, now what we want to do is we want to then do what we've done before. We take these coordinates. All right, these are really coordinates, right? 
0, 40, 25, 43, 75. And we're going to graph them onto a graph. And then we can connect the, the, the dots. We can draw a line, a uh, line of best fit if we really want to. And we can come up with an equation. So let's try to graph these on a coordinate plane. All right, now here's my coordinate plane. You've got that on your note packet. Note if I, I've already I've already set up the uh, the numbers for you, the the increments that we're going by. But the one thing we want to make sure we do is we label this correctly. We always want to put our independent variable along the x-axis. All right, so down here I'm going to put number of texts. Okay, and then my dependent variable is always going to go along the the y-axis alright so I'm gonna put total cost along the y-axis alright so my independent variable down here my uh, dependent variable up here and go ahead and and graph those three points on here and I'm gonna do the same it's gonna jump here because I'm gonna pause mine and and do it right away okay so as you can see I graphed the three points and it asks if this is linear, and if you take a ruler and connect these points, they do connect to a nice line. So that means that as soon as I know it's linear, it follows our y equals mx plus b form. And all I have to do is figure out the slope and the y-intercept, and then I have the equation. Now the y-intercept is very easy. If I look right over here at 0, the y-value is 40. So right off the, the get-go here, I have the y-intercept, so I know I know this much. To figure out my slope, I just take two of the points. All right, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I believe my points for the y-values. I'll just take the first two, were 43.75 and 40, and that would be 25 texts minus zero. All right, so I'm going to get 375 over 25. So if I take out my calculator again, let's move that over a bit, and I go 375 divided by 25, that's 15 cents. All right, and it makes sense because they said in the problem that it is 15 cents per text. All right, so here's my equation, 15 cents, 15x, plus 40. That's the equation of my line. All right, so um, this whole idea of independent and dependent variables, now we're just rolling it into uh, questions that we've really done before. Okay, guys, here is the last one for tonight. Uh, this is very similar to the one before, a uh, little different, a little different, but uh, because we got this little diagram going on here, but it says, Billy Joe Bob needs four more pieces of lumber for his scout project. The pieces can be cut from one large piece of lumber according to the following pattern. So it looks like he needs two big pieces and then uh, two small pieces here. Uh, it says the lumber yard will make the cuts for Billy Joe Bob, that should say Billy Joe Bob, at a fixed cost of 225 so he has to pay that. All right, when they say fixed cost, he has to pay that 225 plus an additional cost of $0.25 cents per cut. However, make sure you read the whole question here, or the whole problem, one cut is free. All right, so to get four pieces that he needs right here, to get four pieces, he needs one, this would be one cut right here, two, three cuts. However, they said the first cut is free, all right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label these. I'm going to say one cut and then uh, two cuts right here. Okay, this would be his second cut and this would be his third cut. However... However, one of these cuts is going to be free. So I'm going to say this one is going to be the free one. Okay. All right, so let's try to figure out this situation here. Um, it says create a table to show the possible costs. And also, what is the independent and dependent variables? All right, well, what are the variables? What, what is changing in this problem? Okay, if he needed more uh, pieces of lumber... Like, say he needed five pieces of lumber, or he needed uh, six pieces of lumber, that, that could be something that, that would change, all right? Um, so if he, if he needed another piece of lumber, I'd have to change my picture, right? It'd be like another cut, all right? 
and if he needed another piece of lumber after that, that'd be another cut. We'll, we'll assume that he just needs these small pieces added on if he needs any more, right? And if he needed another piece, that would be another cut, okay? He'd, he'd have like this huge piece of piece of wood that he'd have to be keep cutting, all right? So I'm going to say if he starts with this piece of wood, he needs uh, really two cuts, right? Two cuts because the first one's free, all right? So I'm going to say the number of cuts that he has to make is going to be uh, the independent variable and that is going to drive his cost alright because for every cut right for every cut he's going to be increasing his total cost so his cost depends on see how they have that word depends on depends on the number of cuts so I'm gonna put a uh, number of cuts here and cost over here, all right? And let's see, if he needs, he, he, he know he wants to start with four pieces, so we know we're going to need three cuts at, at the very least. So how much would that cost him? Well, that would cost him 225 plus 25 cents. But now remember, one cut is free, so really he's only paying for two more cuts. All right, so that would be 50 cents, and if I add that, it's going to cost him $2.75. All right, so we're going to put in 2.75 right there. Now, let's say he needed another board. Let's say he needed four cuts. All right, well, what would that do? The only thing it would change here is this, this two right here, right? So we'd be taking that two out. We can take that two out of right here, and that's going to change the cost, right? So that's going to change the the 2. We're going to change that to a 3. And what is that going to change his cost to? It's going to change it to $3. So if, if he needs 4 cuts, well, that means he needs $3. All right? And we can do the same thing with 5 cuts and the same thing with 6 cuts. And basically every time, that's going to make that go up $0.25. Cents. All right? So there's there's your chart. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is you you don't have a, a graph on your, your paper. Um, what I'd like you to do is just take your ruler and create your own graph. All right, I'm not going to do this for you. I'm not going to, you know, show it to you because we should be able to do this already. I want you to create your own graph. Make sure you put the dependent and the independent variable on the right axis. All right. This really is going to be our x variable. So, variable. so this is going to be our independent, independent variable. Okay, and this is going to be our y value. So this is going to be our dependent variable. And you should be able to make yourself a graph. There's some space there, and graph these points on the graph. And number two, I want you to come up with the equation just like we did in the exercise before. And remember, it's all going to be about y equals mx plus b. All right, so see what you can do with that on your own. And that should only take you a few minutes. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. So hopefully uh, you got a, a, a good basis from this. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the morning.